They don't call me Switch Force for nothing. I've been in this game since before it was called the Switch. This channel originated before the Nintendo Switch came out. And so you've come to the perfect place to figure out which Switch to get or if you need, want, maybe should upgrade. So good morning, Mario, and good morning, Switch fans. I am proud to lead you through this perilous journey. All right, there are three Nintendo Switch models and they all are varying levels of price, varying levels of functionality, and varying levels of recommendation. We're just gonna jump straight into it because there weren't really any sales for the Switch console for Black Friday or Cyber Monday for any of it. So you may still be looking for the Switch for your significant other, for your child, for your friend, for your grandma, or for yourself. There's the Switch Lite, the Switch OG, the regular, and the Switch OLED. A whole bunch of different versions have come out, but I'm just going to focus on the systems themselves. There's cool colors, there's cool skins, there's Pokemon on the back, there's Splatoon Inklings on the back, but what matters is the system. And today we're going to find out which you should buy. Now, no matter which switch you get, the freaking memory card is a must. And the Lexar Play card is the best memory card, and they do have a ridiculous deal going on right now. This is a terabyte of storage, okay? That is so much. It's a massive memory card that will hold every Switch game you ever need to download, every save file, and do it securely and speedily. And this thing is 60% off today at the link in the description down below. I got them to give us 60% off. This is an expensive memory card. So this is the cheapest price you're ever going to see, and it's the last memory card you'll ever need. It has so much storage. It is so perfect. I love it so much. Every time you click the link, it helps support the channel, and I do highly, highly, highly recommend it. We're gonna kick it off though with the Switch Lite. All right, the Switch Lite is a $200 handheld only Switch. Obviously, this is the most important fact about this system because despite the price, which is appealing, it can't switch. All it can do is play handheld. Now, you might dismiss this immediately, but I do not. Now, the Switch Lite released a couple years back and I was really impressed because it ergonomically feels much better in your hands than the original Switch. It's got a smaller form factor and it's got a true D-pad, okay? And just the position of the Joy-Con that don't detach feels better to play. This is a very nice system and the smaller screen actually does favors for some games by making the resolution look a little bit crispier, a little bit better. Now, I think many hardcore gamers will be quick to dismiss the Switch Lite because it cannot dock. You can't stick this thing into a TV in any way. There is no way to connect this to a TV and there's no way to detach these Joy-Con. Now that makes some games simply unplayable on this system. It's very few, but there's some games that just don't work on the Switch Lite. Now you can connect Pro Controller or other Joy-Con to this. So it still could technically be a multiplayer machine if you were to set this up like just on a, you know, on the table on a stand and connect some Joy-Con, connect a Pro Controller, you could still play. But because of the fact that it does not switch, because of the fact that the Joy-Con do not detach, I can only really recommend this for two groups of people. Number one, the heavy traveler. If you are traveling constantly, if you find yourself playing your games portably only, like maybe you're a busy dad and when you're at home, wifey and kids take all your time and so you just wanna play on the train ride to work and that's what you're gonna do, then the Switch Lite is great. You can't play Super Mario Party, but that's okay because Mario Party Superstars is better. You can play everything you need to play. Breath of the Wild, Metroid Dread, Pokemon Scarlet and Violet, and it's the perfect system at the perfect price. $200 is still a lot, but it's definitely less than the $300 range of the other systems. So if you are someone that's on the go and maybe prefers to play, like you're a GBA player, a DS player, a 3DS player, this will work insanely well for you. The other category is if it's a small kid. I think if you're 10 years or under, this is still a great pickup. It saves you some money and it's the personalized device at an era and time in their lives where personal property means the most. It's theirs, but it is gonna be very hard to share and it is going to be very hard to ever play in the living room or play with friends unless you're gonna invest in a bunch of extra Joy-Con and Pro controllers that serve no purpose except when you're in multiplayer and the screen is really little. So maybe it's like an only child, 10 and under, or a really heavy traveler, busy, busy person. The $200 Switch Lite is appealing because of the price point, but I do not think it is the best Switch for everyone. And I think it really only works in specific use cases. And I've found myself this year in particular, 
not using this system at all. As somebody that plays every Switch game, a heavy Switch user, uses all the controllers, buys all the accessories, this is probably my least favorite system. And I don't want that to turn you off completely, but I do think the investment of an extra $100 to $150 is well worth it when you can actually switch the console. That brings us to the OG, the Switch that started it all. The Switch that has been slightly revamped, but barely noticeable. This is the Switch that everyone has and everyone talks about. This is a $300 system, and the Joy-Con can come on and off, and the screen does have a very thick black bezel around it. Okay, this is a perfectly great Switch, and it was a perfectly great Switch for many years. It's a fine system, one of Nintendo's very best catalogs, and it's $300. But I am going to kind of go on a limb here and say that this is the Switch you should not get. Now, I think this is going to differ from many other reviews and other sources, YouTubers, websites. But I don't recommend the Switch OG for anyone. I think this system has run its course, and I think the OG Switch is not a good buy. If they were going to drop the price of the OG Switch to $250, we could have a different conversation. But at $300, with no good bundles on Black Friday, and no big sales for the holidays, this system is not the one to get. Obviously it can switch, the Joy-Con come on, on and off, it works compatibility-wise with every accessory, it plays all the games, it docks, it goes on the TV, it plays portably, it's the Switch! I don't believe it's the Switch you should get. I really don't. There are some elements of this Switch that just aren't enough. First of all, onboard memory, it has 32 gigs. Okay, that seems like enough, but it's really not. And since then, they have doubled that for an improvement. It also has this bezel that really feels antiquated. If you ever got the Clamshell DS, okay, the first one, the big chonker silver DS, it came with like the Metroid demo. That's what the Switch now reminds me of. Maybe it's not as ugly looking, but it feels similarly clunky in comparison to Nintendo's newer offering. Now, speaking of newer offerings, some of you may be asking, what about another Switch? And this is sort of my PSA about the Switch Pro. You've probably heard a ton of details and rumors, leaks and discussions about a new, more powerful Switch. And I 1000% believe that is coming. I 96% think it's happening in 2023. But I also am very, very sure that the system will retain cross-platform play and the same library, the same games, and the same usage as the older models. What I mean by that is when Zelda Tears of the Kingdom comes out, if they drop a new powerful sexy Switch, it will still run on any of the old Switch systems. When we get to next holiday and Metroid Prime 4 finally drops, it'll still run on the Switch. Nintendo will not abandon their 114 million player user base just for a little more power. That will become the premium system that will deliver better graphics, better performance, better frame rate. Games like Pokemon Scarlet and Violet will not be as... Well, they're not even that bad. The game's phenomenal. Please get Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. But if you are someone that thinks it's unbearable, a Switch Pro would make it less unbearable. But they won't have a brand new lineup of games. Maybe there'll be like one or two titles that don't cross over, but I don't think you need to worry right now about a Switch Pro. We don't know if it's coming out in March, in May, in October, or maybe 2024. So my best advice is to forget about it. If you decide you want to trade in or sell on eBay and later upgrade, that's fine. But don't sit out right now because there are so many amazing games to play and we have no guarantees of when this new system is coming. And with that being said, let me introduce you to the Switch I believe you should buy which is the OLED. Now, yes, there's fancy versions with beautiful ombre Joy-Con and amazing Splatoon iconography and Pokemon Scarlet Pokemon, but that's not why. I've used the OLED since launch day for over a year now. And initially in my beginning impressions and review, I said the OLED was a nice but not mandatory upgrade. That the OLED had some additional features that were really cool and it's my preferred way to play, but it's not something that you have to go out and get and $50 feels like a good chunk. No longer is that how I feel. The OLED is now the switch to get. It gets rid of the bezel, the screen is bigger. It has a much stronger kickstand. It doubles the internal memory from 32 gigs to 64 gigs. And most importantly, the brightness and colors of this screen are second to none. No other switch will compare to playing your games here. Once you experience 
Super Mario 3D World, Animal Crossing New Horizons, and Zelda Breath of the Wild on the Switch OLED, you will never want to go back. Look, I have a Steam Deck, one of those fancy expensive PC portables, and I can play way more games on the Steam Deck, and they run at higher resolutions with way better frame rates and way less glitches. But I prefer the Switch OLED if the games are comparable because of the screen. The OLED screen is stronger than even the Steam Deck screen. Its vibrancy and its colors are brighter and more lifelike and pop off the system. Of course, the OLED also switches from dock to portable. The Joy-Con come on and off. It works with every accessory, but it's that screen that seals the deal. Yes, it's $50 more, but do not set yourself up for a situation where you're gonna see your friends and want to upgrade because the difference between the bezel and the darker screen and the no bezel and the brighter screen is substantial, okay? When it takes up almost the entire real estate with the bigger screen compared to that bezel, it's a whole different world. It really does make a major difference in every time I play the game. Now, if you're someone that plays only on the TV, okay, but I bet you'll take this on the go. I bet you'll play in bed. I bet you'll play in the bathroom. And I bet you'll play on the go. Now, the other great thing about the OG Switch and the OLED is it can use one of these. I'm not being paid for this. I wasn't told to do this. The fixture is literally my favorite way to play the Switch. What the fixture allows for is Portable Pro. This is not possible with the Switch Lite, right? You can't, I can't stick this in. There's no, it, it doesn't do that. With the fixture, both the Switch OG and the Switch OLED slide in, pop a Pro controller and allow you to play Portable Pro. This is my favorite way to play. This is how I play majority of my games. This is how I beat majority of my games. And it truly is such a difference maker that it's another humongous boost for the Switch OLED. They currently have like a $5 off deal, by the way, if you want to grab it on Amazon, just as like a PSA to help you get a better price. They just dropped their OLED version. Previously, it only worked with the OG Switch, but now there's no excuse. The OLED is the best system. And yes, it's $50 more, but I truly feel that's $50 well invested. You might find someone at Best Buy or Walmart or even a relative try to convince you that why spend the 50? The systems play the, the same games. They do the, the same exact thing. They have the same exact Joy-Con, the same exact controllers. Why drop 50 more when that could be used on a heating bill or another present or just save it? I really feel like the $50 is well spent. I would rather have one less game and a better Switch than one more game and a worse Switch because this OLED will be bright and shiny forever and you can save for another game. This Switch does feel antiquated, does feel out of date. And so I have to say, unless you're a heavy travel portable player or a small child, the OLED is the way to go. This is the system to buy because of its bigger, better screen. Simple as that. It does have more memory. It does have a much sturdier kickstand in the back. The games are all the same, but when you're playing those indies with those bright pixels, mm, it just jumps. When you're playing Animal Crossing, Mario, Zelda, these Nintendo first party titles with colors, that's what Nintendo does best. They make the games fun, exciting, bold. The OLED was specifically handcrafted for those experiences. There's a reason why their upgrade was a brighter, more vibrant screen. It just makes sense. These aren't the browns and grays of Gears of War. These are the reds, the yellows, the greens, and the blues of Mario, Zelda, and every other first party franchise. So the OLED is the winner. I know $350 is a lot. They have not dropped the price ever. In fact, they've increased the price. The special editions cost more, but the regular OLED with white Joy-Con or the red and blue Joy-Con is a fantastic pickup and anyone will be so excited. It's the newest system as well. So if you're looking for just that wow factor, there's currently nothing newer. Maybe one day there'll be a pro, but like I said, don't worry about that. The OLED is the one to get. And I do think even though the $50 is a substantial hike, it is worth it. So hopefully that helped you out. The OLED is the main go-to for a heavy traveler, portable player, or a small kid. The light works. And I just don't think that the Switch, the OG, really has a place anymore until it gets a price drop. And if you are someone that does have an OG Switch or a Switch Lite and you're considering an upgrade, I do think it's worth it. If you're a big player of the Switch, if that's your primary console, I do think getting that better screen, find a way to, you know, gift this to somebody else or sell it on eBay, get some cash out of it and, and get that OLED. I really, really think it will make a world of difference for your experiences 
And yeah, you can get by without it, but I sure wouldn't want to go back. So there you have it. That is the switch to buy in 2022. Thank you so much for watching, everybody. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Stay safe, stay healthy, stay happy, stay positive out there. And until next time, love you lots. Switch Force, out.